Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today we're going to make this right here. Make this on my CNC lathe. We're going to go from drawing it in CAD, and I'm not going to cover that too much. We're going to draw it in SketchUp. And uh, then I'm going to export it as a DXF file from SketchUp and import it into a CAM program. And the CAM program I'm using is made by Dolphin, and uh, it's called Parts Master. And I think it's an excellent program. The best part to me is two things. It's more intuitive. Uh, it just makes sense to me. And uh, their tech support. Usually when I got a question, I email them and I hear back with them sometimes the same day, but absolutely by the next day. And uh, they're easy to understand. He, he, he's, uh, the guy that writes back is always good at getting down to my level of knowledge. Anyway, uh, and that's worth a lot to me. But after we created or uh, imported into CAM, we'll set it all up and then export it into G-Code, which is what this lathe computer reads. And the lathe computer uh, uses a Linux CNC turn, and, uh, which I don't know a whole lot about, and I'll show you some things about that too. But then I'll show you how, how you calibrate the lathe to make the part and, uh, and then end up with that right there. Anyway, let's get started and uh, see what we can do. Okay, I've created a simple profile in SketchUp. Dolphin also makes a CAD program and I'm sure it works fine. I'm familiar with SketchUp so I'm going to use it to create a DXF file and import it into the Dolphin CAM program which is called Partmaster. And it will convert it to our G code. Uh, basically what I have here is four quadrants in SketchUp. Uh, this is a top view. I'm in the upper left quadrant. Uh, I'm, this is a 2x2 two two square by 12 inches. Uh, I took and drew a 2x2 two two square and measured diagonally. It's 2.865 inches, which is basically close to 3 inches. So from, from the center mark, I went 1.5 inches, which is half of our diameter, because we're working with a radius here. So I've made that profile. Now I need to export that as a DXF file. Export 3D model. Make sure I got DXF selected. Uh, in this case, I've already created it, but I'll overwrite it. Export. Okay, now we're done in SketchUp. Uh, now we need to open up Dolphin Part Master. And when you first open the program, it gives you the opportunity to import DXF. If you've already got the program open, you can do the same by clicking File and selecting that option. So, Import DXF YouTube Test, right there. And it has a screen that pops up to make sure some few, a few basic parameters are correct. We're working with inches. Uh, profile for lathe, make sure that's selected. Click OK. There's our profile. First thing we want to do is click Setup and check our tool change parameters. Now we're most concerned with uh, this, these two numbers right here. This is the front turret tool change. So uh, we're, we're dealing with front turret or uh, cutter, whatever you want to call it. And I don't want it to go to any kind of Z position. Z is your horizontal axis. Uh, I want to pull out about two and a half inches. That's what I've got set right there. So you click OK. That means the tool will pull out when it gets done cutting. It'll pull out two inches. OK. Now we want to define the tool. Click on Tool down here. We want a button style tool. The radius is going to be 0 0.03. Now click Tab. And, and when you click Tab, it enters it. And you'll notice the Z and X have the same number. That means we're dealing with a round tool. Uh, click OK. 
click uh, select tool uh, the screen uh, there's the tool that I created the button tool um, we've got a constant speed of 500 rpms which my lathe I got to change it manually so that doesn't really matter uh, feeds per minute this is in inches per minute see it right there it's a 7.8 inches per minute we're going to change that to about 25. Now that's just something you got to get a feel for. Click OK. Next step is turn. Turn defines the area that you're going to turn. And it basically creates a rectangle. There's your rectangle with those four parameters. But you can do it like this. Click that right there. And I want to start turning right here. And I want to end turning right here. Now, this is a finishing depth of cut. We want it for the X and Z. We want it. I want it to be uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, and this is the roughing depth of cut. So, didn't take that one. 0 0.03. Roughing depth of cut I want about 60 thousandths. These are numbers I know from experience work pretty good. Click OK. And there's our, our tool path. Starts right about where I clicked right here and ends where I clicked right here. Now we want to create a profile turn, which is basically a finish cut. And when we do that, It gives you the option for approach and runoff. Approach is uh, how, where you want the tool, how you want the tool to approach the work. I, I want it to go straight in, so I'm going to click None. OK. If I click OK right here, notice what it does. The tool path for the finishing cut is this blue line right here. follows that whole profile. Well, I don't want the cutter to come into the center. It's going to be supported by a tailstock and it'll hit the tailstock. So we got to fix that. To fix that, you click uh, well, let's go into view. View, display options, and if you click number spans Click OK. Notice right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we don't want the finished profile to be on 1, 2, or 8 and 9. So if you, this is the operations we, we created over here. We just got done creating this option. Let's go back into that. If you click options right here, start at number one. Well, we don't want it to start at number one right there. We want it to start on number three. So put three in there. Right here, we want it to end at seven. So we put seven in there. Click OK. And run is kind of like a, a reset. Uh, it runs the tool path again. Now you'll notice that blue line is missing right here. No blue line right here. But the finishing pass, and it's hard to see. Every time you zoom it, it you got to hit run again to display it. So let me zoom in real close. Run, click run. You'll see uh, there's your end finishing, I mean roughing pass. And then one, that blue line right there is your finish pass. Run again, but the finish pass ends right there. In other words, the tool will go in and come out here and go back home. So we're all done right there. That is the tool path defined. Now we want to uh, save this as a G code. To do that, you click Post Processor right there, and this is where you select the post processor for your lathe program. And I've already got that selected right there, and I've got a folder to put it in. And I click OK. 
Okay, it's been created. Now, Billy set this up for me. Normally, I, I would have set it up to save it to a doggle or a flash drive, but Billy uh, connected it to my Wi-Fi and put a, a link in my browser where I can go to my browser and then click upload and uh, find that file here, wherever it is. There it is right there. Click open. Now it is, there it is right there. Okay, now we need to go downstairs on the lathe computer and import it. Okay, we're looking at uh, Linux CNC on the lathe computer. Uh, I've got to home all. That basically calibrates the lathe or the program to the lathe. Okay, that's homed. Now we need to bring up the test file. And there it is right there. Now we need to calibrate the lathe for diameter and the lateral position. So we need to find a known diameter. Well, we know the chuck is 5.831. So what I got to do is bring the tool up against the chuck. Okay, right there. We need to touch off. First we need to make sure we're on X. X is, is in and out. Touch off and key in that number right there, the chuck diameter, which is 5.831. 5.831. Click OK. Now, we need to set the start start position. And the start position is the end of our stop. Which There's the start position. Click touch off. Make sure you're on Z axis. Right there. Touch off. Click zero. I mean, that, leave that at zero. Click OK. Now, the, the cutter is uh, representing where it actually is. Now all we got to do is click run and it'll start cutting. Uh, it's going to be kind of noisy because I'm going to have the vacuum cleaner running. Okay, here we go. All I have to do is click run on the, on the uh, keyboard. Now we're just going to have to wait until it what it's doing now is I uh, told it that the diameter was larger than necessary, just for safety. So we'll 
just wait and it'll start cutting. If you look up at the uh, computer screen, you can see what it's doing. Each one of those lines is a pass. Okay, we're starting to cut now. profile now. finishing cut. Okay, now it's going back to that defined position, home position. There you go. It's fairly smooth. Just a little bit of sandpaper. Oil. Doesn't take much sanding to make that smooth. I like it. Well, that about wraps it up for today. I think it came out pretty good, don't you? I'm always amazed watching watching the lathe do something like that. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. I know it's been a heck of a learning curve for me. Uh, just to fully disclose, uh, Dolphin didn't pay me to make this video, but they did give me a discount when I told them I was gonna make a video. So you can call that bribery if you want, but. I'm being totally honest when I say it's a very intuitive program and above all, excellent tech support. Can't say enough about their tech support. And I've used the heck out of them. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me and be sure and subscribe and ring that bell. Thanks.